In the village, there are cycles, and these cycles are generally about two weeks, where every two weeks, what you hunt for or gather changes dramatically. In the spring, it might be geese and ducks. And then in the late spring, it might be blackbirds. And then it might be subsistence fishing. After that, it might be gathering of berries. And then after that, when the ice forms, it might be going out and doing ice fishing for pike. You really could be out there year round and not get everything. You know, you almost have to be there two or three years year round to get all the different subtle things that go on in the village. My name is Clark James Mishler. I'm a photographer and I've often referred to myself as a visual anthropologist. Some of my favorite work is doing documentary work, particularly in, in rural Alaska. Peter and Vera Spien were the, the main characters in this plot. <laughs> when I first met them, they had a one-room house with a single light bulb in the middle of the, of the ceiling and a linoleum floor that was fairly well worn out. And I slept under the kitchen table. I saw all these things change as time went on went out on many, many trips with Peter and, and Vera and Vera's mother and Peter's mother, all the aunts and the uncles and the cousins. All the different explorations around the area of Quithlip. All these activities it just ended up being a wealth of experience and a better understanding of how subsistence people in Alaska live. And of course, you know, while I was there, to, to make photographs. And those photographs kind of speak for themselves. On the Quithlick River, from the village of Quithlick, no more than a five, ten minute ride by boat, they have a little cabin and a little smokehouse and some outdoor hanging poles that they hook up in the summertime to hang the fish. And then they'll string a uh, harp over top of the fish to keep the rain from spoiling the fish so that it has plenty of time to dry without getting wet. The house has no insulation. The mosquitoes are, are deadly, you know, <laughs> but it's great fun. And it's great to see the family. The kids are playing uh, along the riverbank and playing up in the weeds and occasionally helping with the process of, of the fish. But mostly it's Vera and her mother who process all the fish. They work 16, 18 hour days. And on top of that, they're cooking for the rest of the family. Peter and his son are out catching the fish and doing their subsistence fishing and then bringing them back and then the kids go down to the boat and they help carry the fish up to the camp. It's just great. The whole process is just built around fun and then Vera is teaching the cousins how to cut the fish and how to hang the fish and they must have five or six different ways of just hanging fish. Sometimes they'll split the fish down the middle, they'll open it up They'll use willow sticks to kind of splay the fish out it's to make sure that it doesn't collapse back on itself. And then they'll hang those on lines. Other times, they'll take the fish laterally and they'll cut it, leaving only the tail connected. And then they'll take those two pieces of fish that are connected by the tail and they'll hang those over a log, right? And then they'll do lateral diagonal cuts in that fish to further uh, open up the flesh of the fish to give it more surface area that it could dry. And usually when you do it that way, the fish doesn't dry all that well. It remains very moist. And you might eat that fish maybe a month later because it's not completely dried. It's just sort of dried on the surface. But the interior of the flesh is still very much like the fish that you caught. And then, you, of course, you've got the strips, which are these tiny little, maybe a quarter of an inch or less sometimes, little strips one side has got the salmon skin, and then you've got maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of flesh of the actual salmon. And those are hung in a smokehouse, and they're dried for maybe three or four days with a continuous smoke drying effect. So these are going to be extremely dry 
and extremely dense in the character of the flesh so that they'll last for six months, even longer, and give you nourishment down the road. So all these different processes of the fish are things that I observed, things that I photographed, things that I had no idea that people were doing these sort of things. And these are techniques that have been taught to the kids and then taught to the, to the grandkids and then taught down the road so that eventually everybody in the village knows how to process fish. And it's been going on for thousands of years. And it works.